Hi again everyone, welcome back to our course in College Algebra. Dr. Tom McNamara here, and we're going to talk about solving linear equations. So in this video we're going to cover the basic strategy for solving linear equations, how to deal with fractional coefficients, there's a really sleek trick for clearing out uh, denominators and simplifying your arithmetic. And we'll also talk about a couple of special cases that you might run into when you're solving linear equations. So, to get the basic strategy, for solving a linear equation, here's what you want to do. You want to collect all the terms with your variable on one side. Anything that doesn't have the variable you need to move those to the other side. Okay, so we're going to do algebraic steps to collect everything that has our variable, typically x, but doesn't always need to be x. Everything that has our variable will get collected on one side, everything that doesn't to the other side. Combine like terms. And then divide to get the coefficient of our variable to be 1, and then once we've done that, we have solved the equation. Okay, so a couple quick examples. Okay, let's start out with something, something pretty straightforward. Forward. Um, gosh, I, I guess I can just make one up here. Uh, let's go 3x minus 4 equals 17. Okay, we're solving for x. In other words, we want to find the value of x that will make a true statement when we plug it in here. Okay, so following this strategy, I want everything with the variable on one side, everything without the variable to the other side. So, this term does not have the variable, so I want that to go away. I want that to go to the other side. How do I get rid of a minus 4? Well, I add 4 to both sides. So, if that equation is true, then this equation is true. Okay, that must mean 3x is equal to 21. Add 4 to both sides. And now... I'm very close here. I want to know what x needs to be. I know what 3x is, so I divide by 3 and get x equals 7. And then you can always check your solution. Okay, whenever you're solving an equation, you can check your answer. Take the proposed solution to the equation, plug it in, and see if it works out to be a true statement. So 3 times 7 minus 4, is that equal to 21? or no, sorry, is that equal to 17? That's the value we have from up there. And, of course, 3 times 7 is 21. 21 minus 4 is, in fact, 17, so it does work. That is the solution to our equation. Okay, let's do another one where we have variables on both sides. Okay. Just gonna pop, we'll pull one out of our book here. Oh, do 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 do. How about this one? Five x minus four equals two x plus five. Okay, five x minus four equals 2x plus 5. So we are looking for a value of x that will make this statement true. 
Okay, so now you can see I have terms with my variable on both sides. And if we remember the basic strategy, it was collect all the terms that have the variable on one side. So I want to get rid of this 2x from this side. So I will subtract 2x from both sides. Okay, so if this equation is true, then this equation must be true, right? And from here, we can see what we need to do. We need to isolate the term with the variable. I got to get rid of this minus 4. How do I get rid of them? Subtracting 4, I add 4 to both sides. And finally, I would divide, getting x equals 3. Once again, we can always check the results of our work. Let's see what value the left-hand side would be if we plug in 3 for x. 5 times 3 is 15, minus 4 is 11. So if we plug in 3, the left-hand side is 11. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 5 is also 11. So both sides are the same. So this makes our equation a true statement. This value of x works. Okay, so this is the, the basic idea. Your homework assignment will give you lots of practice problems for solving these linear equations. I do want to look at situations where we have fractional coefficients. There's a useful technique to simplify linear equations that have fractional coefficients. Let me try this one here. Two-fifths y minus two equals one-third. Okay, so two-fifths y minus two equals one-third. Fractional coefficients. Now, you could just do the arithmetic uh, with fractions, okay? It's just, you'll have to find common denominators if we end up adding fractions. So it's going to be a little more convenient if we do this little trick, which I call clearing denominators. Okay, I'm looking at my denominators. I got a denominator of 5. I got a denominator of 3. So I need to come up with a number that 5 will go into evenly and 3 will also go into evenly. It doesn't take too much work to figure out that's 15. 15 is evenly divisible by 5, it is also evenly divisible by 3. I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation. All the terms are going to get multiplied by a 15. Okay, so every term in my equation gets multiplied by 15. So now here's the point. The 15 has a factor of 5 that cancels with the 5 down here, leaving me with a factor of 3. So if I hit 2 fifths with a 15, it becomes a 6. 6y. Six Alright, this is a 30. And over here I have a 5. Right? The 15 has a factor of 3 as well. That will cancel with the 3 in the denominator, leaving me with a 5. So the point of using the LCD is it will cancel out the denominators. So if this equation is true, this must also be true. So y equals 35 over 6. Remember, we're still applying that basic strategy once we're down here. We want to isolate the terms with our variable on one side, get every, everything that doesn't have our variable to the other side, so we would add 30, giving us a 35. Then we want to get rid of that multiplier of 6, so we divide both sides by 6. So y equals 35 over 6. And we could, have, we could check it, but I'm just going to leave it. At, uh, leave it like that for now. Okay. So, we got our basic strategy, 
and we have a technique for dealing with fractions. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about was some special cases. So, a quick note here. <coughs> Excuse me. Solving a linear equation will typically give one value. So if I'm dealing with a linear equation, I am expecting exactly one solution. There are a couple of exceptions. Okay, if you think about the material we did when we were graphing linear functions, okay, the graphs of linear functions are lines. So, solving a linear equation involves finding where two lines intersect. Okay, so this first example. Uh, Gosh, okay, I forgot what it was. Uh, 3x minus 4 equals 17. Okay, this was our first example. If I graph this line, 3x minus 4, it's going to look something kind of like this. It's going to be a line with slope 3, y-intercept negative 4. So if I'm solving this equation, this is equivalent to saying we are trying to find where that line crosses this horizontal line, y equals 17. And I believe we did this at x equals 7. So if you graph these two, they cross at the point 7 comma 17. Okay, so the solution is 7. So, solving linear equations corresponds to finding where lines cross. So, typically we expect lines to intersect in one place. There are some exceptions, though. Lines can be parallel, in which case they will not intersect, and you won't have any solutions. So, let me look at an example of that, and then we'll look at one other special case. So, let me do this one right here. 2 elevenths minus 4x equals minus 4x plus 9 elevenths. Okay, so let's just follow our strategy. The strategy when we have fractions is to multiply everything by the LCD, so I hit everything with an 11. Hit this with an 11, it cancels out the 11 in the denominator, we have a 2. Hit this with an 11, you get minus 44x. Hit this with an 11, minus 44x plus 9. Okay, I want all terms with the variable to one side, everything that doesn't have the variable to the other side. This has the variable, I'm going to shift that over to the other side by adding 44x to both sides. If I add 44x over here, I get 0. They cancel each other out. Now this doesn't have the variable, I want it away, so I would subtract 2 from both sides, and I'm getting this. So if this equation is true, then 0 equals 7. Now that's a problem because 0 is not the same as 7. We call this a contradiction. Okay? If this is true, then 0 equals 7, so this starting thing must never be true because 0 is not equal to 7. So if you get a situation like this where your variables cancel and you get a false statement, then your equation has no solution. And graphically that corresponds to 
this line and this line would be parallel, right? They've got the same slope, but they've got different y-intercepts. Same slope means they're rising at the exact same rate, so they will never touch if they start at different places. And this one starts at 2 elevenths, this one starts at 9 elevenths, so the lines will not cross. Okay, one more kind of unusual scenario that I want to go over with you, and it's this. Okay, so we're going to solve this equation. 23 minus 2 fifths x equals minus 2 fifths x plus 23. Okay, once again we're seeing fractions. We know what to do with clear denominators. Hit everything with a 5. Hit this with a 5. 5 times 23 is 115. Hit this with a 5. It becomes a negative 2x because it cancels the 5 in the denominator. Over here, negative 2x plus 115. 5 times 23 is 115. Everything with a variable to the right, we're going to add 2x to both sides. When we do that, that cancels out the 2x over here. This doesn't have the variable. We're going to subtract it away. But when we do that, we get this statement. Okay, 0 over 0. This is a true statement. Okay, this is a true statement. That means the solution set to this equation up here is all real numbers. You pick any x value, and the left-hand side will be equal to the right-hand side. So an interval notation or a solution set would look like this. Now, we could probably have figured this out right from the top because um, the right-hand side is just switched. The negative 2 fifths x is still here. Negative 2 fifths x is just, instead of putting the 23 first like they did over here, they put the plus 23 second. Okay, so we probably didn't need to do all this to figure out the left-hand side is exactly the same as the right-hand side, but it just gives us some practice with the technique and some, some emphasis there. Okay, so remember the basic strategy for solving linear equations. Get all terms with the variable to one side, everything without the variable to the other side. Uh, remember how to deal with fractions, the technique of clearing denominators. It really simplifies your computations. And remember, typically when you solve a linear equation, you're going to get exactly one solution, but there are some outlier cases. You could have a linear equation with no solutions. Remember, that represents parallel lines if we draw the graphs. Or you could have a linear equation with infinitely many solutions, where the left-hand side is identically equal to the right-hand side for all values of x.